Oh, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. It has been a while. I have not touched Leet Code for a long time. And let's see if I can dust off my skills and put out a video. So today we're going to be solving Leet Code problem 891, time-based key value store. Design a time-based key value data structure that can store multiple values for the same key at a different timestamp and retrieve the key's value at a certain timestamp. We want to be implementing this time map class and time map will just initialize the object with the data structure and we want to have a set method which takes a string key, a string value and an integer timestamp and this is going to store the key with the value value at the given time timestamp. We're also going to have a method string get and this is going to take a string key and an integer timestamp and what it's going to do is return a value such that the set was called previously with timestamp prev uh, is less than or equal to the timestamp provided. If there are multiple such values, it returns the value associated with the largest timestamp, timestamp prev. If there's no values, just return an empty string. So this question is pretty easy. Uh, and one thing that we want to make note of before we go is uh, this one line here is that all timestamps um, of set are strictly increasing. So that means as time goes on, we're never going to get a time back, right? So if we get timestamp three in the future, as we're getting uh, the set method called, we're never going to get something like timestamp two. And this is actually going to greatly simplify the problem. So let's not even look at a basic example. Let's kind of just look at the intuition because it's relatively straightforward and we don't really need to waste time with an example. We can kind of just walk through how we would do it with the actual intuition and then we'll code it up. So I will see you once I've wiped away all this text with a blank page here. Okay, so we looked at the question prompt. Now let's actually see how we're going to solve this problem. Remember that there's two methods that we need to implement here uh, and that is going to be our set method and we have our get method. Let's look at set first because it's relatively straightforward. Remember that we're given a key here. We're given, oops, key, we're given a value, and we're given a timestamp. So we need to store these values, right? We're going to use two dictionaries here. The first dictionary is going to map key to all of the values for that key, right? Because we can store multiple values for a key. Also, we need to store for each key all of the timestamps we have because remember we need to do a lookup based on the timestamp. So these are going to be our two dictionaries, key to value and key to timestamp. Now one thing that's very important to realize is that remember earlier when I said that timestamp in the set method is monotonically increasing, which means that we will never go back in time with a timestamp. That way we can be sure that each value, the index, um, in here, if we think about it, if we were to flatten our values and just have like v1, v2, v3, this would correspond with timestamp one, timestamp two, uh, timestamp three, right? For each key that we have here, because you, we never have to like insert something prior. It's only going to be increasing. So we can just think of like appending these. So this is going to be very important. Now we have the get method, which is the tricky part, right? We're given a key and we're given a timestamp. And remember that what we want to do is we want to find the timestamp. So if this is our timestamp that we're given, we want to find the value at whatever the previous timestamp is such that the previous timestamp is less than or equal to the current timestamp. And it's guaranteed that this one will exist. And whatever this biggest previous timestamp that we have for the key, that's what we want to return. So that's why we have the dictionary to map key to timestamp. Luckily, like I said, because the timestamps are always increasing, this list is sorted. Now we're looking for what? We're looking for the biggest value that's less than a certain value. And we're guaranteed to have that value uh, at this point it should be screaming to you that we're going to use a binary search here uh, because we have a sorted list and we're looking for an element. So we're not looking for the element exactly. We're looking for one to the left of it, uh, which is that classic kind of just moving the indexes until you get to a certain point binary search. So that's how we're actually going to find the index uh, inside of our mapping, right? So say the key is, I don't know, 12 and we have the values one, two, three, say we find the index to be two for whatever timestamp we're given, then we just need to go into our value dictionary for that key and the index because 
time is increasing uh, will be the same there. So we just perform our binary search on the the, uh, the value list here for the timestamps, find whatever index um, corresponds to the timestamp we want, then we just return the value at that index from the list of values in the key to value um, uh, dictionary. So that's what we want to do. It is a binary search to find the index, and then we just return the value inside of uh, this dictionary. So relatively straightforward, two dictionaries, each storing the key as the key, and a list of either the value or the timestamp as the value in the dictionary. And then we just do a simple binary search. So enough talking, let's go to the code editor, type this up, really straightforward, really simple, let's do it. All right. Let's now code up the solution. Before we do, I just want to say I got a new keyboard. It's one of those mechanical ones. If the sound is too loud or it's too annoying, just let me know in the comments. I'll switch back to my other keyboard, which was much more subtle. So let's get into it. First thing we want to do is just code up the init method. So what we want to do here, remember, is just set up our two dictionaries, one which maps the key to the values and one which is going to take the key and map it to uh, all of the timestamps for that key. So we're going to say self.valuedict is going to be collections.defaultdict, passing in a list here. And we're going to say self.timedict is going to equal collections.defaultdict, and we're going to pass in a list. So that is the init, easy part done. Let's now do the set method, which is also really easy. I'll just get rid of some space here. And what do we want to do? We just want to say self.valuedict for a given key. We just want to append the value. So we'll have that list of values for a given key. And we want to do the same thing for the timestamp. So we're going to say self.timedict for a given key. We're just going to append the timestamp. So that is the set method. Let's now do the get method where we actually have to do the binary search. So remember for a binary search, we need to first set up our left and right boundaries. So the left always begins at zero. The right will begin at the end of the array. Uh, so now we actually need to get the length of the array. So we're going to say length of self dot uh, time dict. And we're going to pass in the key to get the items here. Uh, but it's not guaranteed actually let's double check this uh is key guaranteed to be in there uh let's see uh let's see if there are no okay so it's guaranteed it's not it's possible that we don't get a value for the key here uh because it doesn't exist so we, what we actually need to do here is do time dict dot get and we're going to pass in the key and if we don't get anything we're going to get an empty list because obviously the length of an empty list is zero uh, and that way our binary search will actually just never start. We can just return our, um, you know, our empty string, which is what it asks for. So, uh, and remember we need the end of our list index. So we have to subtract one from the length of it. So that is going to be the left and the right boundary. Now let's actually set up the binary search. So we're going to say while left less than or equal to right, we're going to get the midpoint. So the midpoint is left plus right. Uh, divide by two. And now what we need to do is check the three cases. If our current midpoint actually equals to the timestamp, uh, then we're good to go. Because remember that the previous times, what we're looking for is previous timestamp less than or equal to whatever timestamp is given. So if they're equal, then we can just end the search there. We found what we're looking for. So we need to say that the, um, the current value here, or the current timestamp is going to be what? going to be self of time dict of whatever the key is at the midpoint, right? So that's the current timestamp. And we're going to say if the current timestamp equals to timestamp, then we're done. We can simply return uh, what the index, right? We want to return the value of an in value dict at that index. So we're going to say return self dot value dict of our key at whatever the midpoint is and we are done now we have the other cases where we have the you know the current timestamp is actually too big so that means that we need to move our search to the left side so we're going to say else if the current timestamp is actually greater than the timestamp that we're searching for we want to say that right is going to be mid minus one 
And then the last case is where our timestamp is too small. We want to move it to the left. So we're going to say left equals mid plus one. So either we're going to find the current timestamp exactly as part of our binary search, or we will have moved the right pointer uh, to where we want to be, or it doesn't exist because it's possible that we actually don't go through this because remember, if the key doesn't exist in the time dictionary, we're going to turn an empty list. Length of an empty list is zero, minus one is negative one. This will never fire, which means that we actually need to um, return our empty string here. So we're going to say return at the end self dot value dict of the key at whatever the right index is, which is going to be the index which holds our uh, value here. If the right index is actually greater than or equal to zero, uh, because remember, we could have not even done the search and that way right would be minus one at the end of this. Um, otherwise, we just want to return an empty string. So I'm just going to run this real quick, make sure I didn't make any stupid syntax mistakes looks good. And let me submit this. And there we go. I think that means it's accepted. Yeah, we're good to go. So uh, let me clear this. Let us talk about the time and space complexity. So in it, I mean, this part, we're just initializing a, um, you know, our data structures here. This is going to be big O of one. There is no nothing there. Here, we're appending to the end um, of, a uh, of a list inside of a dictionary. It's just going to be big O of one uh, for that one in the time and space. Uh, let's see. So get, uh, obviously this is a binary search. So binary search time complexity is going to be log n and the space complexity here is going to be big O of one because we don't use any extra space. We just use these ones. So in total, I mean, the time complexity is going to be log n for the get um, to store all of the values. It just depends on how many you end up storing. So I guess that's big O of n in space. But I mean, for each individual one, it's just O of one. Um, so yeah, that is your time and space complexity. Like I said, I haven't made one of these videos for a long time. So sorry if my explanations aren't great. I am a little bit rusty. I need to dust off my leak code skills, but hopefully uh, this question was relatively straightforward and, um, you know, get me back in the uh, back in the saddle. So, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, if you guys want to see any other videos, let me know. I mean, no one's really hiring right now, so it's difficult. A lot of the questions on leak code are very out of date and there's not really any point of me doing like the top ranked ones because companies aren't really doing interviews. So it's it's difficult to actually know which ones are. But anyway, uh, yeah, if there's a video you want to see that you're stuck on, let me know if it's not too particularly annoying. Um, I should be able to make a video. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. If you made it to the end, you're awesome. Appreciate it for watching all this way and uh, have a good one. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.